Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're going to be looking at a first look of Borderlands 3. So I was out at uh, E3 2019, and 2K was cool enough to let me uh, come over and do a recording session and check out the gameplay. Uh, so I thought I would share it with you guys. So in this case, I'm going to be playing as the operator, uh, which is basically a good way of saying, like, I'm going to have, you know, like, sniping stuff and skills and all that kind of thing. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, play some Borderlands 3. So... Here, so I'll give you guys a sense of how stuff works, just in case you are curious. Uh, so we, at the beginning, it's kind of pre-set up, at least in the purposes of the demo, uh, to have certain skill points and uh, certain skill trees and things like that unlocked and uh, different types of equipment. Uh, I wanted to go with the operator specifically because he had certain guns that were better, but the thing that sold me is the little drone that you see right there. So that reminded me a lot of the Division 2, <laughs> and I really like using drones in the Division 2. So I decided, okay, I'm going for the dude who has the drone, and uh, that way I can use that as kind of a little, you know, assistant in combat there uh, against the horde of endless enemies. Now, I must preface this by saying that I have never really played much of the previous Borderlands games. I dabbled in them a little bit, but not much outside of that. Uh, I quite enjoyed what I played here. Again, this is just a demo. It's like a pre-timed, uh, it's, it's, it's a very specific mission. You know, once you complete the mission, the demo ends, and you guys will see that towards the end of the video. But, uh, my first impressions of it was that, it, you know, I, I had a good time with it, and you'll be able to see that here, uh, obviously. And, uh, so the combat was very fluid. I didn't have any sort of problems with that. Uh, these little dudes kind of reminded me of those little bastards in Halo. Uh, which may or may not be intentional. Uh, different types of enemies, obviously, throughout. It, it, you know, I, I found that um, some of the enemy ty body types... Now, my, this, my, this is probably an ignorant statement, because, again, I'm not super familiar with the history and the lore of uh, Borderlands and stuff. I guess I just don't understand why so many of the characters, the, the, the opponents, look, like, identical to each other. Um, you know, in older games, that would... I would accept that more because you have limited resources. In a lot of newer games, at least if there's like some sort of story-based reason, or it's like you know they're all dressed up like the same team or whatever, yeah, you, you give it. It's obviously they just have certain production, like certain models they just reuse. But uh, I guess I don't know why they always use the exact same models because you're really going up just against a few different types of enemies, um, and they don't cycle enough where you you don't notice. I guess. Uh, like in Rage 2, for example, like they obviously have a limited pool of uh, opponents, but it just felt like uh, you weren't constantly noticing the exact same ones over and over, probably because they had enough difference, uh, or enough, enough of them were different that you didn't always see that. With this, it feels like I'm seeing the same couple of opponents each time. Now, that's small potatoes. That's not like a big deal or anything. It's just kind of something I, I noticed. Uh, I like the weapons in this, although I noticed that you it seems like you have to pick up the ammo like manually. Uh, or at least that's how it seemed to play in the demo anyway, uh, which I found that to be a little strange. Again, I say this having never played the previous Borderlands games all that much, so I I don't know if that's like a staple of the franchise and that that's understood, so I apologize for my ignorance on that. But it, it did kind of throw me off a little bit. But, you know, eventually you get kind of used to it and it's no big deal. It actually kind of adds, in a way, it adds another element to it because you have to go there and do a little bit of, like, treasure hunting, which is not a bad thing. Um, but gameplay wise, it was, you know, like I said, it was a smooth FPS type of experience. I really didn't struggle too much with it. Uh, I definitely had fun playing it. Um, you know, there's, I really don't have anything to, to complain about in that department. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm not the best at first person shooters, but I'd like to think that I'm at least decent at them. Uh, at least in single player mode, and that multiplayer stuff, I would just get absolutely destroyed. I also I have a penchant for melee, so even in irrational moments and irrational scenes, I sometimes like to do that. Uh, there you can see a sample of the, the uh, little droid dude, so sometimes and, uh, I'll send out the droid to just let it attack stuff, and then I hide like a wuss behind things so that I can you know, recharge or re reload or, or whatever needs to be done, or just kind of generally weaken the opponents that are coming up. And that way it makes it a little bit easier when I have to run out there and basically do that and just melee them in the back. I think I ran out of ammo and that's why I switched over to the little handgun there. Uh, yeah. Now, okay, this was kind of cool. See, I thought I died, but because this is the first time I got to this point, but you apparently get a second wind. Now, again, I don't know if that's like an older thing that 
uh, happens with the previous games or whatever, um, where you can just kind of come back from that. But to me, that was new, so I, I enjoyed that. Uh, so it makes it easier to, I guess, not die within the game. Uh, although at some point you will see me fail at that test, but it was mu it was very very helpful uh, because as long as you like basically hit somebody, you know, and you kind of recharge a little bit, then you're good to go. So my health is down there. I'm only at 33 at the moment, and that was kind of like the lowest you get before you're basically uh, dead or will be dead, uh, presumably. Um, and then you just try to go around digging up like health packs and things like that, which you, you will find sporadically. Again, I think health packs is another one of those things you have to pick up manually. Um, and that can get a little irritating, because I think at one point I threw away my good gun uh, in favor of the wrong gun, uh, just kind of by accident, uh, because I was just getting so in the habit of like holding down trying to pick up ammo. Um, so that's just more my issue, I think, than the, the game itself, but it is a thing. And, uh, yeah, and then we head in on our way. And find all these treasures, and there's cash there. Now, for the purposes of a demo, there's really no reason to loot everything, because you can't do anything with any of it. But still, I decided to do that, because that's just my gameplay instincts. When I play any sort of FPS like this, like, whether it's, like, uh, you know, I think I kind of go to Bioshock on that stuff. Like, I just, I will grind and collect everything I can, even though there's really that much of a point, but at least in a full game, there is a reason to do that within a demo. I still can't help myself, though. I'm just like, no, man, I gotta, what if I need that money? What if I'm gonna need it later within the five-minute demo? I might need it. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys play very similarly to that, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, overall, I like the decorum. I mean, it hasn't changed much, as I understand it, from the previous ones, um, other than Tales from the Borderlands, which I never really hear anybody talk about that one, although I think that's because that one's like a weird spin-off. I like that. So that's like a warning of things to come, uh, of what the layout's going to be like, about how you're going to get attacked by sound, which I thought was a kind of a neat little touch there. But yeah, so uh, the art style I think is cool. It's got that cell shaded look, uh, which is I've always had a uh, pension for ever since Jet Grind Radio introduced it to all of us. But uh, obviously this goes well beyond and very much expands it. So you can do things more subtly. Uh, I did not. <laughs> obviously, I just kind of ran in. Again, when you're in this like um, demo, you just kind of go like, eh, I don't know if you know. There's no reason to play it subtle. Uh, I'm not doing it for that type of footage. I was just kind of you know playing it to play it. Because the other thing I have to, uh, I'll tell you guys, is like when we were doing the recording session, um, they got kind of backed up. So you know you don't want to sit there and wait and take a lot of people's time because yeah the the um, there was like a private session thing underneath the 2K loft, um, and in there there was just people who were going to record footage, and you have like preset times and everything. Um, but they were having technical issues because uh, they were playing these on PC. So this is the PC version, by the way. Um, and the they provided us with these little like USB flash drives to be able to take the footage from one device to another. Obviously, take the footage home. Um, and the flash drives were USB 3.0, but unfortunately, the front port on all of the PCs was USB 2.0, so it could only max out at that speed, and so it was just going, like, comically slow to move people's footage, uh, to the point where they knew there were 3.0 ports, but they were on the back of the towers, and there was, like, a discussion about running out somewhere and buying a bunch of USB 3.0 extension cables, trying to plug those in, and then you know, try to speed up the process, but I don't know if they ended up ever doing that, but at least while I was there, that was the issue that was at hand, so, yeah, I felt, I felt so bad for the, like, the, 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 you know, the tech team there that has to deal with that, because, not me, but a lot of other journalists, and I'm not a journalist, but other publications and all that type of stuff, influencers, whatever the hell you want to call them, that whole group, media, uh, we're just like getting frustrated and stuff, and I'm just like, dude, take your time, relax, like, you know, life's short, <laughs> it's okay. And then these guys become the face of the problem, even though it's really not their fault, it's just a thing that happened. But, uh, yeah, so I thought they were really cool, and shout out to the guys over at 2K if they ever watched this, because you guys, uh, you, you, you did a good job there, trying to make sure everybody got their footage, uh, and you dealt with a bad situation, but it is what it is. <clears throat> But yeah, okay, so back into the gameplay here. Uh, uh, again, I'm telling you, I really enjoy that second win thing. That, that definitely makes it uh, a lot nicer. You know, it, I mean, personally, I'm not, I'm not the best when it comes to wanting, like, some big challenge in a first-person shooter. Like, I enjoy a good challenge. Like, I beat Call of Duty 2, like, all the way through on Veteran and stuff. But, like, I also don't like to play a video game to stress myself out. I play a video game to have fun. Um, so a challenge is nice, but when it's like absurd, I, I don't like it. So the the idea of going into a first person shooter and just getting like killed immediately, I don't like. So 
Yes, that to some people, the more hardcore will tell me, oh, that's whiny and complaining and wussy, blah, blah, blah. But I like the ability of health packs to regenerate. I don't really like having to hunt for them, although in this case, you know, you do, but it's fine. I put, but at least they compensate that with the second wind thing, which I, I like. In other words, I kind of like not dying and losing all the time in a video game. Once, you know, there's obviously a certain tolerance point where you just go, you know what, I'll play something else. And so fortunately, they have that system in place so that I could enjoy the game more. Uh, which is very nice. Um, and then obviously we got a lot of these like frozen people, which is cool. Actually, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know what the deal is with that. I kind of I don't know if they told yeah like these people here that are, like turned us down. Honestly, I can't remember what the reasoning for that is, but it's just kind of cool to see that and, and break all these people who didn't do anything to me uh, and kill the Borderlands dudes. I will say this: one thing that this game did, that at least the marketing team for this game did, that was really funny, is so you see that like the, that type of bad guy. He's the most common one. He's on the cover of all the games, like the iconic, I guess, bad guy of the Borderlands franchise. Uh, so when I was walking around E3, they had a big banner for this game coming up. And in the upper right corner, it said uh, Epic, you know, Game Store exclusive. And they knew how much people hated that. So the marketing team was kind of clever about it. They had that next to the bad guy and just an arrow saying it was his idea, referring to the exclusivity being on Epic, which I was like, that's a good way of owning that. It doesn't change the situation, obviously, but at least you have a sense of humor about it. Um, okay, so here, this is like different vending machines and so forth. You can buy upgraded ammo and different guns and all that stuff. I didn't really tinker with that. Again, for the purposes of the demo, it was kind of limited as to what I could actually do. But I wanted to give you guys a little sense of what it looks like. And I believe that spot right there, this thing right here, I believe is where when you die, you just kind of respawn from. Kind of like Bioshock and you have those like regeneration chamber type of things. Um, so obviously we're going through boss fight logic because it's just like giving me tons and tons of stuff right before I move on. So yeah, that's boss fight 101 right there, which we will go see in a second, uh, which yeah, give me your, give me your flesh. Okay. Right on. And there he is music man, bull dude with a shield. Um, so I, I screwed up. <laughs> going into this fight, yeah, mouthpiece, which is me, because I've been talking this entire damn video. That's me, I'm mouthpiece. But anyway, so that guy, I screwed up a bit, because I think I, I mentioned before about how uh, the constant need to, like, hold down X to pick stuff up caused me to accidentally drop the gun I liked. So then I, I kind of realized it around here that I only really had my handgun and a sniper rifle with limited am ammunition, which, of course, presents a problem. Um, but, you know, I was like, alright, well, I'm gonna have to do this. So I mostly use the handgun here to just try and pick off some of these bad dudes. Now, uh, this fight gets a little stressful because you're constantly being hit by the little, what I keep thinking of as those little Halo dudes. I kept getting attacked by them, and then you go after this guy, and obviously he's at his weakest when he, uh, puts the shield up or away or whatever, so he's obviously exposed. Um, but then it's, it's kind of like, oh, the sniper rifle's really not doing enough damage. Um, but we'll, we'll work on that. But, uh, yeah, so, there you go. Little, little bastards getting all them one at a time. Crushy, crushy. Smashy, smashy. And dead. Uh, which I believe that they're, I mean, obviously they cause damage to you, and so do those, th that's what I was talking about before, the, the sound thing, so this, the whole area gets, like, sound explosions, and if you get too close to it, you obviously get hurt. Um, so, those little bastards, I feel like they're only around to do the second win thing. Like, if I get too hurt, you need to kill one of them to kind of get back up on your feet, uh, and so you make the best of that. One thing that is cool about this gun, though, is like once it runs out of ammo, you basically use it as a grenade, which is cool, uh, which would end up being rather useful, although how you, you know, I guess it, rather than reload, you just throw it away and it explodes and you just apparently have another one, which is cool. Um, I give Borderlands props for the visual and conceptual creativity there, just a bunch of random stuff. Oh, I forgot, I forgot to show you guys that, because that's the first time I used it, was that I have, this character also has the ability to do projection like that, so what it basically does is it tricks the opponents into thinking that that's you, obviously, and they go and they attack him, which gives you a chance to escape, reload, or whatever you gotta do, uh, to try and, uh, you know, get the advantage on the situation, so... Having played a lot of games like Second Sight and PsyOps and things like that back in the 6th gen days, I've always got a, a you know a, a small spot for projection missions and characters and things like that. I always just find that to be a neat mechanic. 
Uh, but here, as you can see, my first actual death. I did not get my second wind, but we'll, in a different way, get a second wind, because I'm I'm not giving up. I'm going to try this again, and uh, we're going to go through the matrix here, and we're going to come back out in our little pod type of thing, uh, and we're going to go back into combat and see if I can kick the crap out of this dude. Now, one thing I'm not clear on is it, it says something like, you know, get back to the fight or whatever. I do not remember if the boss's health resets, if mouthpiece's health resets, or if I just kind of pick up where I left off. Um, I kind of get the feeling it's the latter. No, no, never mind. You can see it right there. His health is all the way back to full again. Um, but, yeah, so we're going to go in and, frankly, we're going to just beat the crap out of him as best we can. Uh, unfortunately, I still was not really able to change my gun because, as I recall, I didn't really have a superior gun either up there in the ammo area or insufficient funds to buy a new one. It was something like that. Um, but yeah, we're still gonna, you know, go in and kick as much ass as we possibly can. These little Halo bastards. I deserve, I mean, they must have an actual name, but I just keep thinking of them as little Halo bastards. Uh, and then, you know, mouthpiece, bullhorn, slut, which I... <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna get him. We're gonna get him. Come on, guys, we can do it. Don't you believe in me? We can do it. Throw enough explosive guns at anyone and you'll take them down. Uh, immune, 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 immune. See, that's an interesting mechanic, because he's not really immune, because he keeps taking damage, but it just kind of shows you, like, you know, what type of hits are more valuable versus what other types of hits are not. So, like, bullets seem to do a pretty solid job. Ironically, this little handgun seems to do a better job than the sniper rifle. Um, and the attacks from my drone and stuff. But even so, he's already down to, like, halfway. So, you know, you just kind of grind and you'll get it done. And, and make sure you kill enough of these little, little fruits. And then uh, you'll get enough. You'll get your health back and you'll get your ammo back. And you guys, of course, know how to play an FPS. But, um... Yeah, based on, again, based on the experience I had here, this is a, a pretty competent one. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking forward to it when it, you know, finally comes out. Uh, probably would want an Xbox One version of this. Um, and, oh, in case you didn't know, like, uh, if you missed E3, one thing that was kind of cool about this uh, is that they released a brand new DLC expansion for Borderlands 2 that bridges the gap between that game and this game. Uh, completely for free. Like, if you have Borderlands 2, it's totally free. They also released a bunch of, like, 4K asset updates for, I think it was for the pre-sequel, as well as Borderlands 2, and I think Borderlands 1, although I think Borderlands 1 had already, like, the Game of the Year edition that came out on Xbox One and PS4, I think already had the 4K assets in it, at least the Xbox One version did. And I'm sure the PC versions all automatically got that as well, if they haven't had it for years. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, they're, they're putting a lot of effort into Borderlands right now, so I'm happy that I got to check it out and try it and let you guys know what I thought of it, and basically my consensus is it's, it feels like, I mean, again, I didn't play the other Borderlands enough to judge it based on that as a comparison, but it feels like a very competent FPS in the vein of, like, Bioshock, but not with the dramatic side of Bioshock, more like, uh... If you took the drama and turned it into comedy, uh, or, you know, adrenaline, or something like that, I don't know how else to describe it, then I think that's pretty much what you'd be getting right here, is this game, so. Uh, yeah, I, it comes out, I forget, it actually shows itself on the screen at the end. But, uh, yeah, that'll about do it for me, guys, uh, as soon as I kill the crap out of this nerd. Uh, but that's, yeah, don't worry, come on, you can die, you can die, let's do it, let's do it. Boom! Dead. Level up. I win. Alright, thank you very much for watching everybody, please like, subscribe to the video, and I'll see you all later.